we're happy that we brought justice to uh, Mr. Amit's family. He has a young wife. Uh, he has two young daughters, seven and one, and uh, an extended family that's participated in, in these hearings uh, a lot of times. And we're happy that they get justice first. Uh, second, we're also happy that an individual who perpetrated a, a brutal, senseless murder uh, in cold blood uh, is off the streets. And I think those two things are, are at this point, what we're most uh, happy with after today's hearing. Mr. Speaker committed a, a horrible act. Uh, this is a shopkeeper who had friends and family and a, and, a, and a daughter, two daughters, and to just shoot him senselessly, uh, it's awful. And, and I think the focus today should be on the justice that was brought to the family, uh, to his, his, his children and his wife. We had never made any offers to Mr. Speaker. Uh, we felt that we had a strong case based on the investigation of Watson Police Department, and we felt that uh, he needed to take responsibility for all of his conduct. Uh, there wasn't going to be any offers to him for leniency. Uh, we think he should take responsibility and be sentenced accordingly. I have no idea what he thinks. Uh, again, I, I focus on, on Mr. Ahmed's family, uh, how Mr. Speaker's conduct affected more than just him. I pay very little weight to how it affected him. It affected Mr. Ahmed's family. He has two children that will be uh, growing up without a father, uh, a wife without a husband, uh, brothers without brothers. It, that's the awful part of this, and uh, Mr. Speaker's senseless act of violence uh, affects the family far more than it affects him. He had robbed a t-shirt shop uh, two days prior to him arming himself, going into a market in Watsonville, uh, demanding money from the clerk, getting money from that clerk, and then shooting him point blank in the chest uh, for no reason. Uh, Mr. Speaker had gotten everything he needed, and then he decided to kill that man, and uh, it was awful. It's hard to imagine people who are capable of doing such things, and our position is people who are capable of doing such things should be away from the rest of us for a long, long time. We're surprised that he pled open to the court today, absolutely. It was a surprise. And this is a huge, it was a huge tragedy for our community, a horrible thing for the family, and we, as a department, worked around the clock on this investigation, and we were absolutely committed to this sort of outcome. He collected a great deal of evidence, a lot of evidence. Um, here in Watsonville, also uh, up in the Eureka area, and it's a very solid, as solid a case as I've seen. This guy was compliant with all of Mr. Speaker's demands when he went into the store. It's exactly what we tell people to do. He gave over the money without any fight, and he was still executed after he did so. Mr. Ahmed did what you're supposed to do. And we still pe tell people to do that because it's rare that somebody gets what they're after and then still will execute the person. It was uh, absolutely tragic and we're, our heart absolutely goes out to the family. Christian was prepared to enter a plea months and months and months ago. Uh, these cases are complicated. We could have a long discussion about whether they're necessarily complicated. Um, but everyone has to do their job, the prosecution, myself, the judge. Um, so as far as why did he enter this plea, I, I think that the answer has to be fairly obvious. You don't walk into a jail cell and say to someone, are you ready to plead today? So as soon as that conversation occurred, he was prepared and willing. I think that there's a number of things to, uh, to consider. And um, in the broadest terms, they are divided into two categories. One I would call Chris, uh, Christian's circumstance, all the things that brought him to that point on that day. Okay. So, and that is broad necessarily, but his circumstance as a human. Okay. And secondly, is uh, legal, social, policy driven arguments about whether. It's appropriate for, I believe there's only two or three countries left 
in the world who impose a life without possibility of parole on a juvenile offender, uh, the United States and Somalia. Um, so you can expect an argument along those lines. I advocate for a client's best outcome. I believe Christian would describe his best outcome as the least amount of time uh, that he's going to spend uh, in the circumstances that he's about to. The reasons are not particularly... They're more sad than anything. I mean, it's, there isn't, there isn't a, a flashy and interesting reason. <laughs>